We're gonna talk about completing a square in this video. So far there's been a few different forms of quadratic equations that we've looked at. We have standard form, we have vertex form, and we have factored form. And they each have their own benefits. Standard form is just like any old polynomial, so we'll come across them a lot in our studies. Vertex form is great for graphing, especially when you wanna know where the vertex is. And factored form is great where you want, when you want to find the x-intercepts of that graph. So <clears throat> being able to go back and forth between these different forms is really beneficial. So, so far we've looked at uh, how to go back and forth between, uh, well, standard form and factored form. So that involves some factoring. Um, We've looked at how to go from vertex form to standard form. That's been good. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, what I'd like to do now is to learn how to go from standard form to vertex form. And that would, that would allow us to go back and forth between any of the forms. So let's, uh, let's take a look at how to do that. The way we do that is using something called completing the square. We should take a look at some squares. So let's take a look at this square here. So this is a perfect square. We have x plus 5 squared. Well, when we expand that, we're going to get x plus 5 times x plus 5. Great. When we expand that, we're going to get x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 25. It's no coincidence that we got 5x plus 5x, because we have the same thing in each set of brackets. One of those 5x's is from this, and the other uh, 5x is from this. <clears throat> so we are definitely going to have two 5x's. So if we like, we could write this as x squared plus 2 times 5x plus 25. The important thing to notice here is that this 5 is equal to the square root of 25. That might seem like a coincidence, but no matter what we do, we're always going to have this relationship. Let's try a different example just to be sure. So if I asked you to complete the square in this standard form quadratic equation, this is what I'm asking you to do. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, whatever this is, we're going to have to divide this by 2 and then square it. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to divide it by 2 and then square it. That's equal to 9. And my job now is to add 9 and then subtract 9. That gives me x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 9 minus 5. And you might notice that this right here, this is a perfect square. This portion right here, this is, well, who knows what that is. That's just minus 14. So we're going to factor this first part that's in blue and see what happens. Well, we're looking for two numbers whose product is 9 and whose sum is positive 6. Well, that's got to be 3. In fact, 3 and 3. So this is actually x plus 3 squared. And whatever is left over, well, who cares what that is? That's just minus 14. Now, this is in quadratic, or sorry, this is in vertex form. So if we wanted to, we could graph this. Okay, let's say that we were asked to graph this. And really what I want is just to find the vertex and the stretch, and that's really all I'm looking for. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that 2. So I'm going to get that y. y is 2 times x squared plus 6x minus 7. Then I'm going to say, okay, well, I'm going to complete the square. So this is equal to 2 times x squared plus 6x. Well, I'm going to divide 6 by 2 and then square it. Well, we already did that. That is 
uh, 9, so I'm going to add 9, and then subtract 9, and then subtract 7. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is all equal to 2 times x squared plus, oops, I'm completing the square now, so I should say that this is equal to x plus 3 squared. I'm going to keep those brackets open, and well, I've got minus 9, minus 7, that's minus 16, okay? And now what I want to do is I want to uh, distribute that 2 throughout the brackets. So this is equal to 2 times x plus 3 squared minus 32, okay? So if I were to graph this, well, I would have something that looks sort of like this, and I would have the point, um, so negative 3 and 32, so let's just call that way up there. I know that's not actually to scale, so this is 3, 32, and then we would go over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2, over 3, up 9. You kind of get the idea. So it's going to look something like this.